May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some words of Sister Joan Chittister of the Order of St. Benedict. It is a great burden to be perfect, unable to accept ourselves as we are. We wear ourselves out in an effort to become unimpeachable. Of course, as good Episcopalians of the Anglo-Catholic stripe, we hold true that what we do today and do in the liturgies and in that one single liturgy that commences on Maundy Thursday, seamlessly taking us through Good Friday and into Holy Saturday, all that lies ahead of us in this week that is to come is not some staged, carefully presented pageant that we reenact, Renaissance Fair-like, in which we merely remind ourselves of events 2,000 years ago, but we believe that through and in God's grace and his very presence, these actions, these events, and this divine choreography in those that God himself acts upon us. That we receive grace upon grace upon grace and are given insight into the Godward movement and direction of the events that lie ahead through each day, culminating in this week in the sacred three days the Triduum. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That is how we cry out in the presence of the divine. I have heard that some liturgists worry that those of you who are only able to attend church on Sundays, that you will travel directly from this Palm Sunday that begins, of course, with the rejoicing of the people of Jerusalem and quickly leap over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and arrive a week from now at the rejoicing of Easter Day, without having experienced the necessary pauses, silences, quietness, perhaps even boredom of waiting and waiting and keeping vigil. Not for ourselves, but for God those opportunities that this Holy Week gives to us. I think that in some important ways, those liturgical scholars are quite correct. Because I think you know that we desperately do need to be reminded that actually we are not here for our benefit. Not for the benefit of our partners, our parents, our children, our friends. There is one reason and one alone for which we are present. We are here to worship Almighty God. Can we be honest as possible 
and not put ourselves at the epicenter of our own little universes for once? Do we have the courage to take God at his word and risk that journey and that path which is called the way, the pilgrimage and adventure of faith in which God is both with us, dwelling in our midst, but is also before us, leading us into love and grace. You have stood through the longest possible gospel reading this morning, and in the high mass order of service, it promises a short sermon. So I promise you this will be, it is only two pages long. I would ask you only and simply to ponder the Benedictine sister Joan Chichester's words again. It is a great burden to be perfect, unable to accept ourselves as we are. We wear ourselves out in an effort to become unimpeachable. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.